Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Just Meeple and Me YouTube channel. This is Jeremy back with another solo playable board game here from Kickstarter. This is monumental. This is a civilization building game. This is a little bit of deck building, a little bit of tableau building. There's combat. There's a little bit of the 4X theme to it, but not, not a true 4X right? any means. There's miniatures, there's card art. This is a fun game. This is one that closed on Kickstarter, I believe late 2018. Got it, you know, a few months ago, just getting around to doing the unboxing video, unfortunately. But this is a game that I've been looking forward to getting. I have this game and I have the first expansion with it, The Lost Kingdoms. Uh, Monumental should be returning to Kickstarter soon here, depending on when I get this video posted. Um, sometime in June or July 2020, I believe, with another expansion to the game. Monumental has asymmetrical factions or civilizations that you can play with. You know, you have the Egyptians, you have Greece, you have, like, I think it's the Aztecs and a few others in here. And they each have kind of their own special powers and abilities to create that asymmetry. So I'm excited to dig into this box, show you what this game is all about show you the great components i really feel like these miniatures look really good i'm actually personally just getting into painting miniatures and i think that these are going to be a lot of fun to to paint and get them looking great for the table so without further ado here we go and right when we open the box we have a packet here that has the rule books in it and there's actually i think three things in here we have the core rule book we have a civilization overview and then i think we have a little book of like map scenario so yeah you can do a little bit of custom map building the rule book has some preset ones in there there we go so here is the core rule book it comes in at just a, at 15 pages there's a little appendix terminology on the back, component list here. So we have the solo Automa module to this game. Now that I will say currently that a couple of the other modules are not solo playable. I don't believe you can use the hero or the monster module in the solo mode, but so but it's still a lot of fun. Okay. So as I said, this is a civilization building game. This is a little bit of deck building, tableau building. You know, so the aim of the game here, in, in Monumental, each player leads a unique civilization. How will you shape your destiny and how will history remember you? Dare you succeed as a warmonger, as a pioneer of culture and scientific progress? or an architect of a great city and remarkable wonders. The aim of the game is to develop your civilization by constructing new buildings and wonders in your city, improving your scientific knowledge and cultural development, and using your military power to conquer new provinces. The player with the most points will win. So, variable ways to win. You can be very military, you know, aggressive. You can be, you know, economically successful. You can build culture and wonders, okay? So this is right here. This is one of the cool mechanics that kind of drew me to this game because this is part of the, the deck and tableau building. So you build your kind of your city powers in this three by three grid here. And then when you want to activate these cards, you tap them and you actually activate one row going down and one row going across. So where you place your cards can be important because if you want certain cards to maybe interact with each other, you have to make sure you're going to be tapping them so they will trigger it in the same turn. But I, so I think that adds a little bit of fun to the game and how that works. And also I believe with this game that when you gain a card, you can put it on top of your deck. So again, you can think about how these combos and kind of planning the head on your turns. So you have cards in this game, you have these map tiles, you know, these tokens are in the base game. I have the game with miniatures. So the rule book's pretty straightforward here. 
The next book we have is just a, a map setup guide. So when it kind of gave you, this is good for two players, level one. This is be two players, level two. So there's a, and then this is a three player map. You can see they start to get more and more complex, more tiles are added. This is a, the four player maps here. And then in the main rule book, there were guides for creating your own map. You can see there's different, there's, you know, mountains and forest greeneries. You have little capital cities. So different terrain types in this game. And then here is the civilization manual, which looks like the top of the Egyptian pyramid. When you look at it, so you can see, you know, Egyptian Pyramid had that gold top and then the symmetrical faces going down. So that's cool. Looks good there. But so we have Egypt, Japan, Denmark, China, and Greece in the core box. A couple of the Special things Egypt can do is Egypt starts the game with the Pharaoh's Barge. This military card provides one military when activated, but when archived, it also allows you to complete a wonder section regardless of its cost. So that could be in handy. Japan has the Samurai School. It is the starting building of civilization. It gives an additional two military if you spend one gold, but only against barbarians. But this is a powerful call card in the first part of the game because you'll be able to conquer more regions before your opponent. And every other faction has just a different way to play, some different cards unique to them, as well as a pool of general cards that everybody can get access to. So there we go. Okay, so those are the three manuals and booklets in the game. Got a couple baggies for storage here. You know, we have a bag of general cubes and markers. We have a bag of bases. We have large bases. And we have small standardized bases. And then I'll show you that reason in a minute. But the first thing I wanna do is pull this top tray out and show you these miniatures. Now these miniatures are for the hero and monster module. These are all the heroes. These are all the monsters. And these heroes were mostly from stretch goals but you have, you know, a hero like Tesla. You can kind of see his electricity pack going on there. You have Shakespeare in the famous to be or not to be pose with the skull. We have Joan of Arc here, waving her flag. Einstein, and that is supposed to be an atom that's floating above his hand. That's how they sculpted it. Got his lab coat on. Okay, and I believe this one over here is going to be Alexander the Great, I believe. And there's a few more in there. I don't know offhand. Actually, this one, this is Gandhi. Let's see if we can get that to focus a little bit better. And each one of these has a card. If you control them or you gain access to them, you know, they have special powers. They can help build your culture, your military, etc. You know, then we have these miniatures of the monsters, and these are monsters from lore. Obviously, these guys never really existed on the earth, but that looks really cool. And we have to fight them. We have looks like a minotaur-like creature. We have like a griffin. Yeah, and this is what I'm like. I'm actually really excited to, to paint these. This is not a painting channel. I'm just getting to the hobby, but I just think that all these individual feathers, this is going to be a challenge, but it's going to be a lot of fun and a lot of potential here. I think they did a really good job with these miniatures. And this is a massive, massive miniature here. You can kind of see the difference between Sir Alexander the Great and whatever this. Oh, this is Genghis Khan, I believe. But massive miniature, high detail. We got this Warhawk, Battle Horse, 
stallion looking great. You can kind of see that looks like a Hun, a Tilda, or maybe it's a Tilda Hun. You know, I don't know. I'll have to read, review the stretch goals, but regardless, big, big model, one of the bigger scale models in the game. That's great. So those all on top here, all these models, those are all optional. And as I said, I don't believe in the solo game currently. We can use those, but they are still there. They still look great. So we're going to move to the underneath trays here. Okay, and now we have some things to punch. All these tokens. These are going to represent your culture, your resources, money. Let me open these up here quick. Okay, so yeah, we have like a calendar, scoring tracker, it's two-sided. You know, we have different tokens there. We have, these are, looks like the different wonders that we can build, you know, Stonehenge, the famous Hanging Gardens, the Great Wall, Colossus of Rhodes, you know, all of these are currently in existence or were in existence at some point. More tokens, more things to punch. Okay. All right, next is the miniatures that we can use for sure in solo mode. These are your civilization faction miniatures here. And I will take the lid off in a second, but the large bases that we saw, you know, previously, in the video, these large bases, these go for like your hero or your, I think they're maybe called explorers. These represent kind of the leader of the civilization. And then your smaller bases are gonna be for the rest of you here. So let's open these up here. Okay, I have the lid off and we're just gonna take a look at some of these. So this is the first explorer or leader mini. I believe this is for Japan. Well, that looks great, nice and detailed. This is the next one here. And I'm not sure what where she would be from, maybe Denmark? We got quiver, arrows, longsword. A lot of detail work here. Again, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun to paint. These are definitely packed in here a, a certain way. There we go. So this looks to be maybe Greece. Got like a dragon head chopped off. This is from the cover. So he's wearing, looks like a lion's mane over his face. This one looks to be more the Egyptian leader. And the last one, I believe, looks like Denmark. This definitely has that Viking look to it. The horns and the beard, you know, the wolf's head up there. Yeah, that looks great. So, amazing manager. So, everybody will move in the game. You're going to be controlling your leaders or you're, you're going to move them around the map. You're also going to be deploying the soldiers. Here. You know, and every one of these soldiers will look different for each faction. Here's a couple of them. We'll focus. 
There we go, a little better. Almost these are looks like to be the Greek hoplites. And it looks like almost and the Egyptians looks like they're wearing a costume of Anubis. Focus. So great detail work on these miniatures. And the last one here for the civilization. It's going to be these Viking warriors again. And you can kind of see in comparison how big, you know, the, the leader, hero, civilization character is compared to the, the normal military character so big difference in scale there now so every civilization has you know one two three four five six seven eight eight nine hero or battle combat miniatures and then everyone else and then there's two and i think these are called explorers or scouts and these are completely different sculpts and they serve a different purpose in the game so there's two for each faction here as well. So you can see this one looks a little bit more in the style of Greece. And that other one I just brought in kind of matches possibly the China civilization. This would be the Egyptian sculpt and kind of the Viking Denmark sculpt. Okay, so you can see a lot of detailed miniatures in this game. That, and they all, as I said, look fantastic. They are kind of a tight fit to get back in the box appropriately. They're, you know, certain grooves that they are meant to go in. Makes it a little challenging to get this right back in the box. I'm sure I'll get better at it. Okay, and that is, so the last thing here, we have these outposts. I believe these all look the same regardless of civilization. So you put a base on it, but those are the outposts that you can construct and then display on the map. Okay, and there's one more tray underneath all this. So we're gonna take a look at that one next. Okay guys, I opened up a pack of the tiles and a pack of the cards. So these are the tiles. See how there's numbers on them. I don't know what that means exactly. But, you know, these are the tiles. Looks like we have like maybe capital tiles. And we have farmland tiles. We have like forest mountain tiles. You know, there's other, you know, tiles in here as well. Each of, I believe each of those terrain have different movement or, you know, requirements. But you build your map out. You know, you're not exploring it randomly. You're building this map before the game. But those fit in just like that. And you would have these preset maps where you're fighting to gain providences and control regions and resources and build outposts and etc. You know, actually, I think those numbers maybe represent barbarians, like with the barbarian forces that you have to drive away in the early part of the game before you can conquer it. If I recall, I could be wrong on that. But the next we have these cards and these cards are what you're building you know there's a common market you can draft or purchase them and then you can you know deploy them to your tableau and then tap them in that manner we discussed to activate some of their powers and that when you tap them it can be you know gain two military strength gain a gold you know each one of these looks like there's a resource here, then an action there. You know, there's buildings. Maybe they give you resources, victory points, laboratories. You know, these are things that everybody should be able to build. But some great looking artwork. You know, Samurai School, this is one of the ones that is unique 
So only Japan will have this card and they will build it first. You know, there's market. So there's, you know, the Hoplite grounds looks like that's going to be for Greece. And this one is gain one military for each fort and archer range you activated this turn. There's that Pharaoh's Barge that we read about. So, a lot of variety here, looks like. I got the second pack that I opened up already. So these are some of the wonders. Now obviously this is going to be very futuristic. The International Space Station. You know, it does say three up here. I don't know if that means you have to be a certain civilization rank before you can construct it. You know, Statue of Liberty, the Kremlin, Notre Dame, Machu Picchu. I mean, these are all the ones that we saw. These are other cards, actions, you know, technologies, you know, fertilizer, combustion engines, pyrotechnics. These are all things that, you know, helped us become a better, more advanced civilization. And these are, you know, technologies and knowledge cards that we were going to play to advance our civilization. Okay, so here we go. Here are some of those special cards from the module. That I was talking about. And these are optional. These, you know, as I said, I don't know if they're soloable, but if you're playing the full game, these are optional modules. We have Cleopatra, you know, and whenever your warlord conquers a province, gain the effect of Cleopatra's card, then she returns. And that is deploy on an opponent's warlord card. Let's see, looks like she gained some gold. Okay, so those big statues or those big miniatures should maybe those are the warlords. So this must be the big warlords. This is Mulan. So yeah, she should represent China. And the first time Mulan conquers a province each turn, draw two cards and use one. There's Gandhi. You know, Einstein said that he was in his, I know if the light I'm using can't see, but he has a ball of light here. And that's supposed to bring to Adam, and that's what that miniature was, sculpt was supposed to be showing. We got Tesla, Jefferson, Da Vinci, Shakespeare. Yeah, but I was Genghis Khan. There we go. I was right the first time. Not a Tilda Han. Genghis Khan, and he immediately will destroy one of your opponent's soldier or warlord from each adjacent province, and he returns at the end of your turn. Sounds very powerful. Joan of Arc, King Arthur. Alexander the Great, Emotep. So those are the hero module cards. We have more. Oh yeah, so there are ranking cards in here. This is level three. So those are the looks like dividers when we're advancing our civilization. So okay, those look great there. there there's a couple more. Packs. These are the monster cards. Let me just open these up here quick. So these beasts, I don't know if we deploy them randomly or or how we do it. Oh. But each soldier and warlord in the province must pay one gold, gold or they are destroyed and then move the Sphinx to an adjacent province. And the Davidus, you must pay four science, choose and discard any number of cards from your city that were not activated this turn, and then claim this card. There is the Kraken under there. Looks like we have a Mogwa. A Minotaur. And so when he is attacking, each player must destroy one soldier from a non-capital province. And then to defeat him, pay two science, two military, and two production, gain the effect of a, of a barbarian token you have previously gained, and then discard it, claim this card. So though that is, you know, the monster module, which can add some different vari variability to the game. And then we just have one more set here of action cards. And again, this is more of the libraries and other cards and forts.
you know, I do like how the artwork is a little different. You know, maybe representing different civilizations. You know, that looks like maybe China. That looks maybe like Athens. I'm sorry, that looks like China, the Great Wall. This maybe looks like Japan, or actually, I'm sorry. That's probably more Viking, more Denmark with the snow and the mountains. You know, workers camp here. This one's looking like an Egypt work camp. Also, also the civilization cards. So, yep, just going back to this miniature here that I was unclear about before, unsure about. This looks to be Mulan. It looks to match her card. We have the sword. We have the sickle. We have the quiver in the back. So, yes, your warlord, if you play China, is the legendary Mulan. Okay. Well, that is everything from the core box. See, there are... There's well over, I think, 200 or 100 cards in this game. You know, I said there's variable modules. There's, you can build your own maps. There's asymmetrical civilizations. It is deck building. It is, you know, asymmetrical powers, tableau building. So I think there's going to be a lot of replayability and strategic depth in this game. And then that's all before we add in the expansion civilization. So I will be right back with opening up the monumental Lost Kingdoms expansion. Okay, and we're back. And this was the first expansion to Monumental. This was offered as an add-on in the Kickstarter campaign. Another expansion with more civilizations and other gameplay elements is supposed to launch later this year. Hopefully this video is up either during or right before it launches. This is Lost Kingdoms. And right off the top, we got another package here with a rule book in it. So first we have some things to punch. It looks like we have new wonders. Panama Canal, Golden Gate Bridge, Ten of Sichuan, the Red Fort, the Walls of Atlantis, a few more tokens. And then we have our, our Lost Kingdoms rule book. I think the culture's in here. I think there's Aztec, there's the culture of the Lost Kingdom of Atlantis. So in this game, here's where we have the instruction manual. So this one doubles as the rule book and the civilization manual. So the new civilizations is the Aztecs. And you can sacrifice as a mechanic, which fits Aztec culture. We have the Amazons. And they have a new resource of horses. So again, that's a new mechanic. Add it to the game. The Mughals, the Muggles. I'm actually not familiar with them. And, and then the Atlantanesians. And they use advanced technology, which is kind of the, the rumor of the last civilization of Atlantis. So then here is kind of the historical over in gameplay context of each civilization. So again, the Aztecs, the Amazons, the Mughals, if I'm saying that right. Okay, and then a few more layouts. Ooh, it looks like we have deserts or that looks like a new tile, these orange ones here. So some new terrain and tiles in this. That's a volcano. 
So that's new. That looks good. Okay, so awesome. And that's a big five play five player. So now we yeah. So now we have the option to play one to five with this expansion. That's a huge looking map. Okay. Next, here we have the new miniatures. And again, we have them in two scales. We have the Warlord size miniatures. And I'm going to admit right here, this is the one I think I'm looking forward to painting the most. If and when I get around to it. You know, I just, this headdress here, you know, detailed feather work with the colors you could do. You know, everything about this miniature looks great, looks detailed, good size, as I said. You know, this one next to it, this is like the standard 28 millimeters. This one's got to be pushing 50 or close to it. Okay, but this is... I'm going to go with maybe the Aztec Warlord, be my guess. Um, I'll go with this one. This is the Amazon Warlord. This one will, looks like then to be the Kingdom of Atlantis Warlord. With the Trident. And this leaves the Mughals Warlord. So there we go. So now we have eight civilizations we can play. I, and then we have the rest of the miniatures here. So these are the two Explorer miniatures, I believe now what they're called, for the Amazons and the Mughals. Then we have the last two here. And then these are the warrior sculpts. So each one is very detailed, each one is very unique. Yeah, this one looks cool for the Kingdom of Atlantis. Looks like you have like this fishing net down here along with the trident, the war helmet. Good. Okay. So. Okay, then right underneath that, we have the new decks of cards. You know, again, probably close to 70 to 100 cards in this box. You know, utilizing new technologies, new gameplay elements. We have the new colored bases, a couple new markers, and then the new stack of tiles. Okay, guys. Well, this has been monumental, an unboxing video. I, you know, this if you like games that feature civilization building deck building, tableau building, variable faction powers, and maybe Monumental is for you. So the new Kickstarter should be returning soon, but this game has a lot of great miniatures to it. And I think it has some great gameplay elements, guys. So until next time, it will be Just Meeple and Me.